watch these YouTube clips, I'm sure you're really enjoying these YouTube clips, the messages. Most of these messages are so easy to understand. You can see this clip over and over again to fully comprehend what I'm saying from the Holy Scriptures. All what I'm saying, I put the scripture verses so that you can cross check and see are they complementing the word of God. Today I want to talk about a subject which we all experience in our life. Many, many times we experience and that is called discouragement. Discouragement. Friends, today I want to talk a little bit more about discouragement. Somebody said your disappointments can be God's appointment. I'm not talking about disappointment. I'm talking about discouragement because there's such a relationship between disappointment and discouragement yet these two are two different experiences in our life. What is discouragement? Discouragement is not disappointment. When our expectations are not met, we feel disappointed. That is disappointment. But discouragement is a feeling of despair, loss of confidence and despondency. It is a choice we make. Please remember, discouragement usually flows from disappointment, but discouragement is more serious than disappointment. Why? A disappointment is come and go, but discouragement is a choice or a temptation you and I have to make a decision. So although we can easily get discouraged because of disappointments in life, please be careful you do not linger, you do not continue in a state of discouragement. Because a discouragement is very universal. A king can get discouraged, even a poor man can get discouraged. We all of us can get discouraged for many reasons. A discouragement can reoccur. It can happen over and over again. But the, one of the dangers of discouragement is discouragement is infectious. A discouraged person usually discourage another person. We tend to carry the spirit of discouragement. A discouragement can be unpredictable. It can happen anytime. But if you and I are careful, we can make discouragement as a short-term parking and not a long-term parking. The cause of discouragement. There are many reasons why we get discouraged in memory to please others. Physically or verbally when we get abused, when there's a financial pressure. There's so many reasons. But please note, discouragement is not the absence of adequacy, but absence of courage. There you get the definition, the right definition of discouragement. D-I-S dash courage. That means your courage is getting low or it is absent. That is called discouragement. Discouraging situations in life. There are so many situations in our life can make us discouraged. When we lose our self-confidence, our lack of support in old age, when somebody gets bad health or being handicapped, loss of job, possibly a death of our loved one. These are all various situations in our life which can easily make us discouraged. As I said, discouragement is a choice. Please don't make discouragement a permanent parking spot in your life which can cause so many other consequences in our life. The dangers of discouragement, when we continue to hold on to discouragement, it can lead us into doubt, selfish, weak, our words can change, we become careless, we become demotivated and most importantly, Discouragement in situations, continuous state of discouragement can lead us into depression and it can even lead a person into suicidal thinking that person is a rejected, unwanted in this world. Don't let discouragement choke you. Can you see? It all began with a little disappointment and continued to grow into a state of discouragement which ultimately ended up with depression and not worth of living. That kind of a mentality suddenly comes into us. Today I want to talk about a man who lived many centuries ago. I call him a veteran, fantastic leader, superb leadership, 
qualities. And this man, Nehemiah, set an absolute example how you and I can overcome discouragements in life. The book of Nehemiah is a fantastic book to read about leadership qualities in today's world. And one of the greatest charisma of a leader is to overcome discouragements and inspire others to overcome their state of discouragement. I'm going to read a few verses from the book of Nehemiah. The name Nehemiah means Yahweh comforts me or comforted by Yahweh. What a great word or name during times of discouragement to realize our God is a God who comforts us when we go through discouraging situations in life. So I'm going to read only a few verses from the book of Nehemiah. Please take time, read the whole book of Nehemiah, which is a fantastic book. And here chapter 2, verse 1 says, And it came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of Artixas the king. Now please remember, this story actually originated or the setup of this chapter 1 is in the country of Persia, today's Iran. And there Nehemiah was in Iran in King's Palace. And he was a cupbearer. I'm going to explain a little bit more of the cupbearer very soon. And the wine was before him. And he took the wine and gave it to the king. Now the king had been before time in his presence. Always king is in his presence. Very interesting word. Therefore the king said unto Nehemiah, said unto me, Why? In your countenance sad. There you get the first reflection of discouragement in our life. Your countenance becomes sad. That is a typical side effect that you and I are discouraged. Our countenance, our facial expression, our words, our body language quickly show we are discouraged the way we begin to move around. Because you are not sick. What a great word. Discouragement need not be sick. Sickly people are not always discouraged people. But discouraged people can become sick. And here he says, see that you are not sick. This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Here is a great king, an emperor, looking at Nehemiah and telling, what is discouragement? A discouragement is a sadness of your heart or we call it a soul, or your spirit, which is quickly shown in your face, countenance, no joy, no happiness, no peace, and your words begin to change. What a wonderful introduction. And then the king said unto him, Why are you so afraid? See, that another part of discouragement. Discouragement can lead to fear. To be afraid. See, reading this one verse, how much you can learn about discouragement and the side effects of discouragement. And I said to the king, O king, live forever. Why should my countenance be sad? When my city, when my home country, the country of Israel, the city of Jerusalem, the place of my fathers and their tombs are lying waste and the great graves are consumed with fire. Nehemiah was very sad when he heard this news, his mother country, his home country, his wonderful beloved city of Jerusalem, they are all in ruins, neglected. That sad news made him disappointing and that disappointing led discouragement which he showed in the presence of the king. Friends, do people observe your discouragements in you. Friends, please make sure you do not pass your discouragement to others. And in this story, the king, the emperor, observed the discouragement in Nehemiah. Then the king said unto me, why are you making this request? What is the request? Or what do you want to do? And so I prayed to the God of heaven, Nehemiah, giving us the remedy the therapy, how you could arise from a discouraging situation. I prayed and I said unto the king, Oh, if it pleases the king and thy, thy servant has found favor in thy sight, please send me to Judah. Wow, friends, 
I hope you're getting this message. Discouragement can drift us away from Judah, which means praise. A discouraged person will find it difficult to praise God. Send me to Judah, unto the city of my fathers and their tombs, that I may build it. Never, never, never forget. Your faith and my faith is always tested by disappointing, discouraging situations in our life. A discouragement is like a test to strengthen, to activate your faith. Let's quickly get to the story and find a little bit more how Nehemiah overcame his discouragement. The Bible tells, if you read the book of chapter 1 of Nehemiah, he was a cupbearer. Who is a cupbearer? A cupbearer is the most trusted person of the king's court. In fact, a cupbearer is more trusted than even a bodyguard or even his wife. Why? Whatever king is, it not only really can be wine, even any food is first tasted by the cupbearer and then given to the king. So nothing goes to king's mouth before being tasted and tasted by the cupbearer. He is such a trustworthy person. Persian king had 100% trust on a Jewish cupbearer. That tells you volume about this man, Nehemiah, a man of integrity, a man impeccable testimony. He always lived in the presence of the king, a cupbearer usually stationed next to the king's palace, most probably next to the king's room. Why? A cupbearer is so trusted by the king, most faithful person, most reputed person, most prestigious person. But yet one day, this cupbearer, who always bubbly, joyful, suddenly found countenance sad. Friends, your discouragement, your discouraging attitude, your discouraged body language can make another person discouraged. A king's presence is always joyful, happy, pleasurable. But the atmosphere of Nehemiah's discouraging discouragement made the atmosphere of the king also to be discouraged. Why? A discouragement is contagious. It can take our atmosphere from happiness to sorrow. Not only our atmosphere, even somebody else's, we can spoil by passing on our discouragement. It is a kind of a spirit. Now, I want you to look at this map very carefully. In this map, you will find here was Nehemiah, the Susa, the ancient capital of the Persian Empire. Now, Nehemiah was not a prophet, not a priest. He was not living in the temple. And if you read the book of Nehemiah, you will not see a word like, then came the word of the Lord to Nehemiah. Then God spoke to Nehemiah. Then God told to Nehemiah, you will not see any such direct instructions from God Almighty to Nehemiah. All but Nehemiah, a cupbearer, a man who was doing a circular job, like a professional. All what he did, he did out of a heart of voluntary. His discouragement made him to become a great leader because he overruled all the discouragement which came against his life. He left the palace of Susa with the blessings of the emperor and he began to travel to his mother country Israel to the city of Jerusalem. Friends, if you read the distance in the ancient world, it was something like 1,500 kilometers, like today's Iran and something like today's Israel. It was a very long distance. Nobody told him to go, but yet Nehemiah, made this amazing journey, how long it took, possibly months. And there he came. And when he came to the city of Jerusalem, his heart was broken to see the state in a such deplorable, ruined, neglected state. And friends, this is where you will see the secrets of Nehemiah, how he overcame discouragements in his life. The first thing, the book of Nehemiah, you will see this over and 
over and again. Every time he faced this kind of situation, you know what Nehemiah did? He prayed. He prayed. There are so many prayers in the book of Nehemiah. Some are long, some are short, some are silent. And there, I want to give you the first golden principle to overcome your discouraging situations in your life. Pray. Pray for the impossible. It is the Spirit of God, the anointing of the Spirit of God, which will enable you to arise from any discouraging situations in life. The book of Nehemiah is a great example for you and I, a businessman or a professional, a circular man who is working in the business world, commercial world, we who face many discouraging situations in this world, how we can overcome many discouraging situations in our business circles. Prayer. Secret of all failure is our failure in secret prayer because a prayer can rewrite that which has been pre-written. So number one, overcome your discouragement with prayer. Ask the Lord to help you, give you the wisdom. Then number two, you will see in the story of Nehemiah, as you flip through the chapters of Nehemiah, you will see over and over again, Nehemiah taking precautions against the various weaknesses in that situation in his life among other workers. Watch your weakness. It is Thomas Edison, the man who invented the bulb, said, Our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try just once more. Just once more. Friends, chapter 4, verse 16 to 18, you will see Nehemiah had a plan, had a strategy how he could overcome weaknesses in your life. The best way to overcome discouragement is to encourage others. You learn again in the story of Nehemiah. He took upon a task and how did he do? With one hand he had the weapon. He told all his workers, in your hand keep a weapon and with the other hand begin to do your job. Take care of your weakness. Don't allow discouragement to become strongholds in your life. Watch your weakness. Next one. Dover become a prisoner of your discouragement. In the story of Nehemiah, you will see this many times. He was discouraged many times by his people, by his opposition, by hearing so many discouraging words. He never made sure any of those discouraging words will make him a prisoner of discouraged world. Friends, today, I'm encouraging you. In this world, we will hear so many discouraging words, despising words, so many discouraging situations. It can be a past. Please don't allow your discouraging situation, your discouragement to become a prison and become you a prisoner of the situation called discouraging situation. Because many times when we go through discouragements, you know what happens? Our mind. It is our mind gets so depressed, it begins to shut all the positive avenues in our life. So the next thing I would like to tell you is, don't have discouragement as a place to comfort your own sorrows. Many people find discouragement as a place of rest, especially when they are hurt, especially when they are wounded. We begin to cry or begin to sing the same song. Suddenly, we become self-pity and comfort ourselves by stationing ourselves in depressing situations which happen in our past. It is said people who are discouraged prefer to lead a lonely life. That can be dangerous. Always note, there are people to help you. So next one, please do not become a prisoner of your discouragement or don't become prisoner of your past, a discouragement which happened many years ago. Positive attitude, a great lesson from the book of Nehemiah. Over and over again, he faced discouraging situation in his life. But what did Nehemiah do? He kept his attitude on track. 
in check. He never made his attitude to become discouraging, disappointing, thereby passing his discouraged attitude to others. Friends, we all know the story. Attitude determines your altitude and your altitude determines your direction. When you read it in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 6, there you find another veteran, David, King David. He too once in his life went through such a discouraging situation. His whole gang, his whole army, his whole supporters rose against him. It's called a place called Ziklag. But the story says how David encouraged himself like Nehemiah in the word of God. In God. Friends, not only we have to pray, we have to get our strength, our souls from God's word. It's God's word which enables us to empower us to overcome various discouraging situations in this world. As I said before, you can always spot a discouraged person by the words they speak. Never speak negative words if you want to live a positive life. Choose your words. Master your words. Master your life. So there comes the attitude of Nehemiah. You see this many times. The words what Nehemiah spoke was so inspiring. It also encouraged others who were going through discouraging situations in their life. How to develop positive attitude. I have listed various things Simple things, practical things, which you and I, if you put into practice, you can sharpen our attitude, which can reshape the words what we speak, words of encouragement. One of the things is, draw on your happiness reserves. Friends, do you know, we should learn to develop reserves in our life, like saving account. And these reserves are God's promises kept stored in our life so that when we go through such situations like discouragement, we can draw from our reserves, which is the promise of God in our life. And there, next one you learn about Nehemiah is his faith. His faith in God. Unshakable faith. I just put a caption called Remember Lot's Wife. Remember the Lord. Always have a note. Have a servant's heart. Don't murmur. You read this many, many times in the book of Nehemiah. How he kept his faith on high note. More than hope. Nehemiah had faith. He had faith. My God. The God of my forefathers will help me to overcome my discouragements and not to overcome my discouragement, finish the task which I began. As I told you, all what Nehemiah did in the book of Nehemiah, restoring the walls, restoring the gates of the city, he did it voluntarily. Why? His faith. His faith. In God. Forget your past failures because your past failures cannot be changed unless you make decisions today to make your future more positive. Don't go back to your past. Don't make your history your story. Looking beyond a hopeless situation is to have hope in God. And friends, today I'm encouraging you. If you're facing discouraging situations in your life, Stop murmuring. Stop whinging. Do not be like Lot's wife who ran the race looking behind. Remember your God. Strengthen your faith. You will come out of any discouraging situation you go through in this world. After all, these are like passing clouds. And friends, the other thing you learn from the book of Nehemiah is absolutely amazing. In spite of all the discouraging challenges he had, he focused on his task, focused on responsive. Today, many people, when they get discouraged, they forget their responsibilities. They forget what they're supposed to do. They just wind themselves down, go to a corner and begin to wait. Never was Nehemiah like that. In those discouraging situations, that is where 
He began to show the others his encouragement and his leadership quality. Nehemiah was such a great leader. Those who were working with Nehemiah were inspired, encouraged by looking at the life of Nehemiah. That great charisma he had. Friends, be a leader in this world by showing others how you can overcome your discouragements by having faith. Make your discouragements a testimony to others. Do not be a boss who always says, do what I'm saying. Today we've got so many bosses in this world. Be a leader. Husbands, wives, be a leader in your home to show your family how you overcame discouraging situations in life and how you made your discouragements to become testimonies in your life. Chapter 4, verse 6, the Nehemiah is showing such great leadership attributes. It is simply unbelievable. A man who lived so many centuries ago, even today, stands as a testimony how you and I can face any discouragement that comes against our way. The other absolutely amazing lesson you can learn from Nehemiah is his memory. You'll always see Nehemiah talking about choosing your memory and choosing your words by confessing positive words. Friends, it is said, build your life on good memories. Learn to forget those things what we have to forget and remember the things what we need to remember. Nehemiah was a man, he forgot that needs to be forgotten. But what do we do? We remember those that needs to be forgotten and we forget those things what we need to remember. And in the book of Nehemiah, he's painting a beautiful picture. He said a picture is worth thousand words, but the memory are priceless. What was his memory? Of his forefathers. This beautiful city of Jerusalem, it had glamorous gates, glorious city. I want to bring back the city gates to that original state. That is my memory. The memory of my city is glory. And I want to rebuild the city to that glory. Friends, make sure your memory is always kept on the right track. That is your brain. Your brain is your control tower. Don't archive discouraged memories, disappointing memories in your life and let not such memories dictate your life. I just put a picture, they say the left part of the brain, the right part of the brain, how do they work? Whether it is left or right, the most important is whether we do the right things according to the word of God. As you progress through this beautiful story, as you come to the end, Nehemiah makes one of the greatest statements in the Holy Bible. One of the greatest statements. I prefer to call this as the mission statement of Nehemiah. I prefer to keep this statement as a mission statement for anyone who goes through discouraging moments in their life. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Wow! The joy of the Lord is my strength. Friends, there's a difference between joy and happiness. The word happiness comes from happenings. It has got all to do with external emotions, external pleasures. But joy, a joy is an inner experience. A joy is all to do with your soul and your spirit. As 1 John 4, 4 says, He that is in me is greater than he that is in this world. A Christian should always learn to say, The joy that is in me is greater than the discouragements, disappointments and depressions in this world. And that joy, friends, that joy comes through the Holy Spirit by trusting in the Word of God. So there comes the wonderful lessons how to overcome your discouragement, build your joy. As I come to the end, I just put a few more notes for those who would like to listen a little bit more. You can go and read it further. Have faith. A cure for discouragement is faith. Never try to discourage thinking for you are secure to succeed. The other way to cure discouragement is to have right response than reacting. Friends, I've given you so many notes as I come to the end. 
the greatest lesson you and I can learn from this man called Nehemiah. He not only rebuilt the city gates of Jerusalem, he even rebuilt the gates of people's life which were broken, broken by disappointment and discouragement. Here comes a man, Nehemiah, a man like you and I, not a prophet, not a priest, not an apostle, a businessman or a professional working the circular world. He comes and stands and says, I can overcome and I will help you to overcome. Isn't that amazing, friends? You and I are called to encourage one another, to build courage for the other person. Be a leader in this world. Not only you are inspired, inspire others. Please do not carry the spirit of discouragement and discouraging everybody around you and wherever you go. Praise the Lord. I pray you are blessed by reading the story of Nehemiah and I pray you will put into practice some of the simple principles I just laid down before you so that you will come out of your discouragement state, lift your potential and most importantly don't allow the joy of the Lord to run dry. Father, we come now into your beautiful presence today. Thank you for teaching us from this great hero of the Holy Bible, Nehemiah, a cupbearer standing before the king. He could have continued to be in the palace, but yet now, his burden for his city gates drove him from palace to the ruins of Jerusalem. And thereby today, we are reading about this great hero who overcame many discouragements in his life by prayer, by positive attitude, having faith, focusing on his task, helping others also to rebuild their life through his life and through his words. Help us, Lord, to be like Nehemiah. Let our mission statement be the joy of the Lord is my strength because he that is in me is greater than any sadness or discouragements in this world. Help us, Lord, to encourage others. There are so many people whose walls are broken, they are neglected in this world through various disappointments and discouragements. Help us, Lord, like Nehemiah, to build the others' gates and restore them so that they too will build their lives on good memories, the glorious memories the Lord has enshrined us in the Word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this message. You are going to see our email address coming very soon. Please send us your prayer requests and we will be writing to you with your queries. Thank you for your time. God bless you. Amen. Amen.